skull-based tumors is a catch basket of uh, tumors that arise from outside of the brain. The uh, classic ones that we see most commonly include meningiomas, pituitary tumors, including both adenomas and craniopharyngiomas, acoustic neuromas or vestibular schwannomas, um, chordomas, chondrosarcomas. So almost any tumor that arises from outside of the brain itself, but within the skull or involving the skull, we consider to be a skull-based tumor. Skull-based tumors differ from intrinsic brain tumors on a couple different factors. First, the biology of the tumor is different and the pathologies and what they involve are different. For example, meningiomas frequently invade, involve, compress, um, cranial nerves. So the presentation of the patient is different. A pituitary macroadenoma might compress the optic nerves, leading to visual deficits, as opposed to intrinsic brain tumors, which may affect um, brain cortex and neurologic function through involvement of the brain matter itself. Skull-based tumors uh, also have the potential to be uh, more benign in pathology and in their biology, so that if we can achieve an excellent surgery the first time around, they are potentially curable. A misconception about skull-based tumors is sometimes that because they are benign, um, they don't necessarily cause patients long-term problems. Yet, benign is not equivalent to benevolent. And in fact, because of the relatively slow-growing nature of many skull-based tumors, patients have to deal with the sequela of these diseases for an entire lifetime. We have the philosophy here at the Brigham and Women's Hospital that patients with skull-based tumors should be monitored for a long time. We follow patients for years to decades, um, in essence, for the rest of their life, uh, with the uh, hope that we are able to achieve cure when possible, but also with the anticipation that recurrence do happen and can happen and that it needs vigilant monitoring. As a patient with a skull-based tumor, I think the most important thing is to fully understand the disease. Every patient is different, every tumor is different, the biology of the tumor is different, and the treatment options as well as the sequela of the treatment decision is very unique to the patient, both in terms of their age, their functional status, their priorities in life, and many other factors. We strongly believe that the best way to help patients is to be able to educate them fully about the nature of the disease and what the complete spectrum of treatment options are. We wish to guide patients on what we feel is best for their long-term outcome, but we really feel that the patient should be empowered to understand the treatment options being discussed and the both short and long-term consequences of those. We at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in the Skull Base and Pituitary Program were very fortunate to have a combination of both classical uh, surgical techniques as well as the most advanced technology and imaging available out there. Uh, some of the leaders who have founded the field of skull base surgery are members of our Center for Skull Base and Pituitary Surgery and have guided our philosophy over the years. We are also lucky here at the Brigham that we have unique access to clinical trials for patients with advanced diseases. Sometimes uh, skull-based tumors can be malignant and can be refractory to the standard treatments such as surgery and or radiation. And here we've really uh, led a lot of the research in terms of discovering new biological targets for um, tumors at the skull base, including meningiomas and pituitary tumors. And that has led to very exciting clinical trials, which hopefully will offer new promise to these patients over the years to come.